So I'm standing here with Mitch and we are at Backyard Bird Shop. And normally, Mitch, we talk about birds because that's what you guys do a lot, but you yes. also do other things. So let's jump into mason bees. Um, I was not aware that they're kind of like our native bee. They absolutely are. They're, uh, they're native bees. They're native to the Pacific Northwest in the western part of the United States. That's one variety. There's also an eastern, east of the Rockies, a variety of what's called a solitary orchard mason bee. It is a non-aggressive bee. It doesn't have a stinger. It will not harm you. And they've been here a lot longer than the European honeybees have been, which have been in decline in years, if yeah. you've been reading about that. So we like to encourage mason bees for all the good that they do. And when you say solitary bee, explain that to me. What does that mean, a solitary? Bee. Right, yeah, that's a great question, William. So they don't go into hives and they, they don't congregate in groups of two and three and four hundred or thousands. They really do their work on their own. They have a lifespan of four to six weeks. Um, they're active um, and around our area from mid-March through um, mid-June. And then, really that and then they are done. Exactly. Okay, and see, I've always thought that they were just a really, really super early spring, but going into June. Going into June, you're exactly right. So early summer, they're considered early spring pollinators uh -huh. and they're super effective pollinators. Some studies show they're more effective than the actual honeybee. Oh, wow. So they can pollinate any number of flowers and early blossoming flowers and fruit trees and bushes, you know, pear trees, cherries, camellias, rhododendrons, those things that are early blooming, um, you will want these kinds of bees around to help in that process. So if, if, if our goal was to get bees, you know, into our areas, our gardens and everything, is there a way to attract these? What is the process of doing that? Yeah, so again, they're a native bee, so they may be in your area, but if you live in, a, in the city or the suburb, you may not have them. And so um, at the Backyard Bird Shop, we offer a lot of mason bee houses. And uh, the mason bees, they really, they, uh, occupy a small hole in about this size uh -huh. and in nature this would be the hole of an insect of a wood boring beetle or a wood boring insect of some sort or in tree bark or some crevice in a cedar shake and that's and what they would use in nature that's what they would use in nature something like that so we can offer them uh, something similar to that where they can go into a, a tube like this and the female after she's finished mating um, she will go and she will start uh, gathering pollen from various types of plants and bring that back and, and put little clumps of that pollen after 20 20 or 25 trips right in the in the back of this uh, tube then on top of that pollen <clears throat> she will lay a uh, uh, an egg mm -hmm. and she can interestingly she can determine the sex of the egg when she lays that no which is fascinating to me that is yeah so on a, in a tube like this after she does that little process then she will wall that off with a little wall of mud and then she will repeat that process all the way through here so in a tube of this size you could have six or eight viable mason bees the females all laid toward the back and the males towards the front um, because males are considered a little bit uh, dispensable. We, we, we're, we are disposable, aren't we? We're disposable, <laughs> so not fair, but that's the case, is, the case in nature right here. Um, and then at the very end of this uh, tube, however long that is, um, she will put a thicker plug of mud to protect those bees in there from predators, whether it's uh, woodpeckers, different types of birds, or other insects. So that is really great. Okay, so now let's say that I, I, maybe I have a house already that I've had for a long time and see no activity, or I'm just starting and I haven't seen them. What do I do to, to start them in my yard? All right, well, that is a very good question, and, and a lot of people ask that. So if you're not sure if you have them, the Backyard Bird Shop at all of our locations offers cocoons in two different forms. So we have them in these tubes right here, and uh, there's six to eight bees right in, in those tubes. And I see tubes. the mud at the end. You see the mud. Yeah. There's a rough sort of finish on the end of that. That's very, very typical. Um, so we have them in that form right here. We also have the cocoons that have actually gone through a whole cleaning process by way of sand or water, and that's taught in our Mason Bee Cocoon Cleaning nice. class, but we offer them as well too. And you can kind of tell the females have bigger cocoons than the males, and, and we can talk about that a little bit, but we offer those at all of our, our shops, and that's one way to know that you're going to have a nice, healthy, um, uh, group of bees in your yard to help with your pollination. Excellent. So these are viable living bees that will emerge as soon as the weather hits about mid 50s for a period of a week or so. Now you said the, there's a lot of different varieties which you mentioned but is there a reason why you would want to use one of the varieties over another? Yep, not necessarily. So this is a, there's a, this is a typical one. If you want more bees you would choose a larger one but this is a typical size right here and this happens to be a, a type of block here that you can actually take apart and clean those cocoons okay. and, and uh, later in the year in November or so. So this is made out of a composite of corn, a corn byproduct and plastic. And this is just a great average size bee house right here. This little guard is put on for decorative purposes, but also um, it protects from any predators getting in there. So it's really functional and it has a little overhang here as well, which is important too, so those bees don't get pelted by rain. Right, and then where would, 
Where, where would we hang them? What is the place that they should Great be? Great question. So um, they should be hung south facing or southeast or east facing. These bees, in order to become active, their body temperature has to reach a certain level. And so if they're facing north or west, they won't get that. But if you put them in the south facing or east facing um, direction at any height, doesn't have to be 10, 15 feet, anything like that. It can be at uh, eye level. Then they will become active sooner during the day, during the course of the day, and they will go do their work. And, and you can actually provide them, uh, since they are mason bees and they take mud to make those little walls in between each cell, you do want to have a, a some place where there's mud. Somewhere available. where there's mud. If you don't have mud, then you can dig a little hole and put some moist mud in there, and that would be super helpful. Now, you might say to yourself, this is too much. I need, I need more help. You guys also do offer classes on this, right? We do offer classes. Yeah, we have two mason bee related classes. We have a mason bee, what I call 101 class, the basics of mason bees that we offer. And in the fall, we have a mason bee cocoon cleaning class. Oh, so good. some people come in with their houses or they come in with the tubes like this that can be unwound and they want to see how many bees are in there are viable or if there have been uh, parasites or mites that have infested those, some of those uh, cocoons. And if so, they can clean those and get rid of the ones that aren't good and keep the ones like these that we just showed you that are. So you can really cultivate a healthy colony of bees in your Perfect. yard and really help with that pollination, which is what you're looking for. Well, there you have it. So for more information, as always, we invite you to go to gardentime.tv. We can click you over to their website, find all the information you need, where their locations are, come and start a mason bee colony all for yourself at your own garden. Thank you so much, man. You're very welcome. Thank you, William.